big issues with uh, um, erosion in the landscapes at the moment is the, the sediments that get washed off and, uh, and are moving into the rivers and then into the, into the reef catchments. The whole process of erosion starts back up here in the hills uh, and in the catchments. And uh, as you can see from this profile here, gully erosion is one of the issues that is, is uh, causing a lot of problems. The, the processes that start erosion off in the landscape is uh, basically starts with, a, with the rilling and, and an, of overland flow of water that uh, just takes small bits and pieces of, uh, of silt off the landscape and then moves, moves it down through the grasses and then once it gets a little way down further and a little more water together it starts to form into what we call a rill and the rill then will be a bit faster and a bit deeper and it'll take off more soil and, and uh, deposit in a narrow band. Once that gets down a bit further and a bit more water into the system, that, that'll eventually turn into a gully erosion process where you, you've got uh, soil being eroded away down to a depth of probably half a metre, uh, like we have here. A lot of the heaviest silts deposit out in various places when the land slope gets flatter, but the, uh, the fine uh, particles that are uh, suspended in the water continue to flow on out to the system and into the reef. And so those are the ones that we're really worried about. Some of the things that we do that exacerbate and increase the potential for erosion are things like our roadways, our fence lines, fire breaks, uh, when we cultivate the soil, uh, when we are doing diversion banks and contour banks in, in a system to, to move water around, building a dam with a dam bywash that may not be in a correct place, all those things can affect the way that, uh, that uh, soil erosion can happen in a landscape. The other thing of course is, is our management of the grass cover and, uh, and how much we keep on the land and whether we have too many stock that have eaten it down, there's no cover or, or very little grass bulk on, on a landscape when the heavy rains come. All those things affect how much water can actually go into the landscape and how much then runs off and how that affects the, uh, the soil erosion. As water is concentrated and gets depth, it increases the velocity. So the deeper and narrower a, a, a water flow, the more velocity and the more erosive power it has. A key to uh, improving the situation is to try and spread water out and keep it shallow. Uh, so if we've got a broad flat uh, bottom of a depression or, a, or a, uh, a, a gully you'll find that it will uh, take a lot of water before it actually starts to erode whereas if you've got a narrow sharp depression uh, only a small amount of water will start to, to cause erosion happening in there because it's deeper and, and faster. Overall, there's, there's probably two things that we need to, to really uh, concentrate on when we're trying to manage a property or, or a landscape for, to improve and reduce erosion flows. Uh, and that is to, first of all, improve the cover, manage the cover on the landscape and manage the cover with keeping in mind the soil type and what infiltration rights are naturally gonna happen on those soils. And the other thing is managing the water itself. That can mean uh, uh, doing things like using contour banks or diversion banks in the right situations or if we've got tracks and fences in the wrong place or that are, are channeling water we do things like woe boys and to stop that water up hold it up slow it down in the landscape and help it to uh, infiltrate more and, and work off into the grass and, and uh, create a, a, a value rather than a, a negative by taking the soil away. When we bought it, it was already like this, and we we're fortunate that this program came through within a few years because we weren't we weren't actually sure what to do about it. Um, and then we met John, and this came up, and he knew what to do. <laughs> we don't know the history of the place, but best as we can tell, if you look down the creek, it looks like this was this spillway went a fair way, and it's eroded back a, probably a good 80 metres. It was eroding because of the design of the of the overflow from the dam being too narrow that wasn't enough for major flood events and once we had a couple of those flood events in a row it would just drop off the edge of it and bring it and it was coming back and back where the lip was probably two and a half three meters it's now as you can see it curls it's leveled out and curled right around 
and made that much larger. And it's probably, probably 20, 20 metres long now, so it's, it dissipates the power of that, that water. And we've really only had one big flood event since, and, and we walked in here and watched it, and it just sort of, yeah, it was just so different. Worked a treat. We were here all the time. John went through the steps with us, and then we, we went about getting a local contractor and got the quotes and put all everything together, and the, how much the wire and the star pickets and labour and time, and we used our tractor and, and their um, excavator. Doing this, we have assist, I think we have assisted in the in maintaining some cleanliness down at the other end in the Great Barrier Reef, and, and that's that is a good thing. We've dealt with it here, but there are other things that we've put in place further up, such as trying to keep it grazed, trying to keep get some more trees, trying to make the the, the, land, the soil and, and country better so it absorbs more of that that water, so it's not causing a problem further down. So because the problem's not necessarily here, it's further out, and that's the same with the Great Barrier Reef. The problems aren't always on the doorstep, so yeah.